I'm Caleb from Caleb's Aviation. Welcome back to another episode of Aviation News. There's a lot to cover today, so let's get right to it. The first item up today, United Airlines will reopen its hub in Tokyo Narita Airport. This comes after years of abandoning the Japan airport, as United has focused on flights out of Honolulu and Guam primarily. However, restarting their operations at Narita makes a lot of sense, especially since one of their major competitors, Delta Airlines, sends a lot of flights to and from the US and Japan via Tokyo. This footage is Delta's Airbus A350 flying out from Detroit to Tokyo Narita Airport, but still an airport within Tokyo. Basically, the theory is, if United hopes to compete with Delta's success in the region of Asia, opening their hub back at Tokyo Narita makes a lot of sense. Especially since United Airlines has a major partnership that Delta doesn't have, with the likes of Japan's ANA. ANA sends a lot of 777s and 787s that are very heavily configured with first and business class cabins to and from the United States to all sorts of parts of Asia via their hub in Tokyo. ANA's 777 is especially densely configured with a large first and business class cabin, taking up more than a third of the airplane. Additionally, United's new Polaris business class seat, equipped on many of their 777 and 787 aircraft, is remarked as one of the best in the United States, and their 777s are also densely configured with a high number of these business class seats. Let's wish United the best of luck in these endeavors with Japan. The next item of news concerns lot Polish Airlines, who have just received their first Embraer E2. The E2 will help lot on many regional short-haul flights within Europe and certain parts of Poland. And lot is already a customer of the Embraer 190 series, so ordering the E2 makes a lot of sense. This is also great news for Embraer, who finally have another happy customer. Talking E-2s, Virgin Australia has placed orders for eight Embraer 195 E-2 aircraft. These aircraft will help Virgin, who already fly the E-Series, in increasing their short to medium haul regional capacity, with the E-2s expected in the next couple years. Moving right along, we have Air Europa, who have announced they will file for bankruptcy. This is hard to hear. The Spanish carrier has struggled for years with selling flights, Mostly their shorter flights within Europe, as strong competitors like Ryanair have really taken the show and taken a lot of their market share. In fact, Air Europa is even based in the Canary Islands, and they fly some 787 Dreamliners on some longer flights. Perhaps these will stay, only time will tell. Next up today, Canada Jetlines has announced they will cease all operations by the end of the year. The Canadian low-cost airline has run into some significant financial trouble. A mixture of high fees, leasing all their aircraft, and strong competitors have really hurt the Canadian low-cost airline. In fact, Canada Jetlines has had some ambitious plans, but competitors like Air Canada and WestJet have primarily stolen all of their market share and potential customers. They even had plans for the 737 MAX 7 on order. However, those look unlikely to happen now. Sad to see them go. Talking 737 MAX, Allegiant's first 737 MAX 8 has rolled out of the paint shop. For those who don't know, Allegiant ordered the MAX back in 2022. This is a major shift from their Airbus A320 family, currently all they fly. However, historically they did used to operate the McDonnell Douglas MD-80 series, which was retired in 2018. Thanks also to Portland Aviation for this awesome footage of the MD-80. This news about Allegiant ordering the 737 MAX is not only unusual because it's a 737, but it will be a 737 MAX 8200, the 200 seat variant that currently only Ryanair flies. I wish them the best of luck, and hope to fly it on its inaugural someday. We shall see. Another item of major news, the A321 XLR has been certified by EASA. This is major news, meaning the type will soon be allowed to fly within Europe. This is also great news for the launch customer, Spain-based Iberia, who intends to send the A321 XLR to Boston this summer from Madrid. And yes, that is an A321 for Iberia. 
Finally, we move on to the last and perhaps saddest piece of news, the ATR plane crash in Brazil. Early this week, a Voe Pass ATR-72 crashed just short of Sao Paulo GRU International Airport. This news is hard to hear, as everybody on board the flight from Cascavel to Sao Paulo would tragically pass away in this incident. My condolences to all the people who have been affected by this horrible tragedy, especially since I just visited Brazil and flew from GRU Airport. It's kind of surreal to see this happen. Also, check out those videos I made in Brazil. I visited the Embraer Aviation Museum, and that video is linked and up on my channel, and I also just flew back to Atlanta with Delta. Well, that's all the news I have for you this time. I hope you've enjoyed. If so, make sure to like, comment, turn on the notification bell, and subscribe to my channel. But until next time, wishing you blue skies and tailwinds.